Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you saw my part one of my QO100 Ultimate Transmitter and Receiver build, well, this is part two. And if you did watch it, then you may have noticed things have changed slightly. Um, I've learned a lot through building the first one and I really appreciate all the comments that everybody made and suggestions. Um, you can probably see that there has been some changes based on the suggestions that people have made. So um, let's just have a look to see where everything is now. So over on the right hand side, I've mounted the Pluto SDR here uh, on the side. This uh, frees up some area. Uh, incidentally, the power supply is not gonna be in here anymore. Um, I wanted more room to lay everything out. So I think it's a lot neater and I had more more stuff to build, so it's not a problem. The power supply can go outside. Uh, if you can hear a whining noise, that's the power supply in the background. It's just up on the windowsill at the moment, so I apologise for that if you can hear it. So we've got the Pluto mounted on the side. That's connected to its Ethernet connection here. Um, the output of the Pluto then goes to the preamp, which is also connected on the side. And then that goes to the antenna connection on the back. So that's that's the transmit side. Now on the receive side, if you remember in the last video, I was talking about whether to have um, to switch the input, i.e. the receive from the LMB. Um, I was going to have it through a little um, little board which had a RF switch in it, and I was going to switch it between that to go between receive on the Pluto or receive on the on the uh, DATV receiver, the mini tuner. However, one of the suggestions, I think it might have been even more than one suggestion, was to use an RF splitter and just feed both of them at the same time. So yes, that's what I've done and it works really well. I don't need to worry about switching between receive. It's just fed to both of them at the same time. Obviously, SSB, Narrow band is uh, vertical polarization and uh, DATV is horizontal. So, you know, it's no point really using either of them at the same time. The Leo Bodner is over here. It's uh, mounted flat now. And next to it is the bias T. So just to rerun through this input here. So we have a GPS connection here that goes into the Leo Bodner. The Leo Bodner puts out 40 megahertz, goes into the Pluto for its reference clock, 40 megahertz. That's great. This is actually powered by the Pi now instead of its own power supply. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. And then we've got here, this is a network switch connected to the back. This feeds three different devices. No, two different devices now. So it feeds the um, Pluto for network and the Raspberry Pi. Now, what you may have noticed is there is no longer an Arduino with an Arduino Ethernet shield. And there's a good reason for that, because I spent quite a number of hours late nights programming coding a really lovely looking dashboard to run on the Arduino uh, that was accessed via a, a web page. I think I might have shown that in the last video. However, it was working brilliantly. I spent hours working on some Python scripts to query the GPS for, for stats like satellite lock and PLL lock, and it all showed lovely on the screen. However, it kept locking up. I don't know why I wasn't even transmitting, so it wasn't an RF interference issue. It would run for quite some time. Uh, and then it would just kind of lock up. Um, the buttons on the dashboard would become really laggy and the relays would stop working. Um, and I really need the relays to work <laughs> because one of the key things that I'm using the relays for is to power the preamp. Uh, and that will be literally my PTT when it comes to running DATV. I want to have a way of killing the power to the preamp remotely so it kills all RF to the amplifier. So yes, we've got rid of the Arduino and the Arduino Ethernet shield. So we've now moved over to a different system and it's all running on the Pi. Something I was a bit worried about because of resources, but it's in the testing for the past couple of days, it's been absolutely brilliant. So I'm quite happy with that. 
Um, here we've got two relays now um, instead of the four, and they're not being driven by um, logic level digital pins anymore. These only need two relays, so one is for the preamp and the other one is to switch the voltage for the LMB between 12 and 18 volts. This is running off USB from the Pi uh, using HID, the human interface device, which is really reliable. It's, it's great, it's easy. Over here on the left, we've got three different step-down transformers because the input voltage from my power supply is 28 volts. That's what my linear amplifier needs. So in comes 28 volts. We've got 13.8 here. We've got 18 volts here. This is only being used to shove the uh, LMB to horizontal mode. And then we've got five volts here. So the top one, the 13.8 volts, that will go through a relay and goes to the bias T for the LMB for vertical polarization. And then when I want to go to horizontal for DATV, it uses this power supply for 18 volts that goes through the relay and switches. I'll show you the dashboard in a little while. Then we've got five volts. Uh, now this powers the Pi and it also powers the Pluto and it also powers the network switch here as well. So that's five volts. Oh, and the 12, the 13.8 powers the mini tuner as well. That's a constant, constant 13.8 volts to keep that powered. So if I've removed the Arduino and I've removed the Ethernet shield, what am I using now? Well, it's quite simple. On the Raspberry Pi, it's running the long min server software for uh, decoding the digital TV from here. And now it's running Node Red. Now I'm not particularly au okay fait with Node Red. This is absolutely new to me, um, but I am a programmer. So learning it was actually quite easy. I'll show you the dashboard and what I've got up to so far in a moment. So don't worry about that. But that's now running on here. And as I said before, the relay is over USB using HID. And this board here is a board of sensors. So what we've got is we've got uh, voltage. These three here are actually voltage and current sensors. The bottom two I'm just using for voltage and the top one here I'm using for voltage and current. This is a thermistor. Now eventually what will happen is this little thermistor here, this will bolt onto the heatsink of the amplifier to give me some kind of feedback um, about what kind of temperature the heatsink is running at. Uh, and then this one here, now this is another voltage divider or voltage sensor, which is detecting the voltage, which is going to the bias T, the LMB. So I can see whether it's 13.8 or 18 volts for V and H. Now, the reason why I'm not using one of these for this is because I seem to have an issue on Node Red with these modules. Anything over 16 volts, it just doesn't show a correct reading. So I've gone back to using one of these. In fact, I need to make another one if I want to monitor the 28 volts because these only go up to like 25 volts because of the resistors that's been used. Now, you may be wondering about how these are connected to a Pi. These three here, these are connected on an I2C bus. So it goes straight into the Pi, literally with two wires. You've got, well, four wires. You've got uh, ground plus five volts to power it. And then you've got two, two for the I2C bus, which is great. So you can stack them and connect them and they all have different addresses, which you can query. Now this one here, oh, sorry, these two, these only have an analog output. So it's basically a, a voltage between zero and five volts. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have analog inputs. So because of that, we had to use one of these, an ADS-115. It's a digital to analog converter and it works really well. You actually get one, two, three, you get one, two, three, four, you get four analog channels. Uh, and that's also on the I2C bus as well. It has its own channel. Um, and this is just connected in parallel with these. And then the analog data from these two go to different analog pins down the bottom. So anyway, I hope that all makes sense. Um, the wiring isn't quite finished yet. I want to completely tidy it up. And like I said, I've got one more sensor to build probably in this bottom corner here. It's just going to be a couple of resistors and a little potentiometer for, for trimming. And that will be a, a voltage divider to feed an analog signal into the ADC, which then I can monitor the 28 volt input. 
there we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the dashboard and I'll show you what I've done. So this is the dashboard that I've made in Node-RED. Now, all you Node-RED experts out there don't laugh. It's literally just my first attempt. And as time goes on, I'll get better at laying things out. So everything's got a label above it so we can see exactly what it's doing. Over on the right, we've got 5 volts and 13.8 volts. Now, these are just measuring the voltages out of the down converters just to make sure those lines are well, around what we want them to be. At the top, it says LMB voltage. Now, for me, I know that eight, around 18 volts is going to put the LMB into horizontal and around 12 volts or 13 volts is going to put it into vertical. Now, to change between 12 and 18 volts, I have these two buttons here. And what I'd really like to do is just have one button which will change the text as I click it. Anyway, if I click the LMB vertical SSB button, the voltage should drop down now to roughly what's on the 13.8 volt line. Then if I want to go back to horizontal, I just press horizontal. And there you go. Over on the left side or sort of left middle, left of the middle, we have a couple of gauges here. One is a preamp voltage. So at the moment, I mean, it's showing 0 0.98, but it should actually be zero. And then we've got a preamp current as well. So at the moment, the preamp is off and these two buttons that you control a relay. So if I click preamp on, you can see here the voltage is going up and it shows the current as well that's being used. And then I can turn the preamp off. Now, these are really reliable. When I was using the Arduino with the Ethernet shield, they were really laggy, but these are really quick and they work pretty much instant and without fail. Over on the left here, we've got Pluto AD temperature and Pluto FPGA temperature. We've also got buffer underflow and net bitrate. Now, these are coming from the onboard MQTT server. However, since adding these, these other dials have started to go a little bit strange. As you saw earlier, the voltage has gone up. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to use these or not. Uh, it, it depends if that's the cause of the issue with the other meters going out of range, showing something incorrectly. I don't think it's a hardware issue. I think it's more of a software issue. Uh, down the bottom here, we've got amplifier uh, and amplifier temperature. This is just like a little graph that shows the temperature over a period of time, like the last hour. And, and I need to calibrate this temperature here. But if I grab hold of the thermistor, so I just put my finger on the thermistor, just hold it between two fingers, it should then start, the temperature should start to rise. Like so. Uh, and then when I let go, it will go back down. But th this this thermistor will be attached to the heatsink. So in practice then, let's uh, let's say if we want to run um, long mind. So here we have long mind client running, which is connecting to the Raspberry Pi and the mini tuner. Now at the moment, the LMB voltage is well, it's set for vertical, so it's not going to receive anything. Now, if I click the LMB horizontal to turn the voltage up to around 18 volts, we should then start to see a signal appear on the long mean client. Like so. And then if I want to transmit, I can then just use DATV Easy. I just say click start. It's transmitting locally. Put in a local frequency, change the port. And there we go. Now I'm transmitting that with OBS. So OBS goes to this program here, DATV Easy, and then uh, gets transmitted. Now, if you look at the DB here, it's around 21, 22. If I turn the preamp on, that should go up because obviously it's going to output more RF power. So that shows me that the preamp is actually working, doing its job. If you guys haven't used no red before, I definitely recommend it. It's really great. Uh, there's a quite a lot that you can do. Let me just uh, stop the transmitter here, go over to the node red. Now this is node red and this is the dashboard, which is used to basically configure everything that's shown on the proper dashboard. Sorry. So this is like the work environment uh, or the flow it's called actually, it's called the flow. So you have a lot of things that you kind of just drag in 
uh, objects or nodes and then you configure them and you can send the data like for example over here these are the ADCs and we're taking uh, the output to gauges so it's really interesting and you can use a lot of this for ham radio as well there's loads of like plugins like ADSB plugins 433 RTL decoder plugins I haven't even touched the surface with any of that but maybe in the future I might do so it's uh, definitely worth looking at and um, trying to get uh, inspiration and get motivated to do something outside your comfort zone. The next part, part three, will be the last part where hopefully I'll be fixed all these little issues. I will have tidied up all the wires and then we'll do a test on air as well. So another thing to show you will be the SSB side of things. So the voltage is set to DATV at the moment, but I'm going to set the Pluto to pass through mode. This allows us to use SDL console. And then I'm just going to reboot the Pluto. I find that it works better after it's been rebooted. The signal's a little bit weak there. So I'm just going to go over to my dashboard and I'm going to change the LMB voltage to change it to vertical SSB. So 12 to 14, click it and you'll see the signals jump right up. Hopefully things will work a little bit better. But uh, there we go. We'll just have to see. Right, so there we go, guys. That's uh, part two done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next one, I'll see you then.